Good morning. It's Saturday the 13th of July 2024 and I'm back beside the River Severn again. <laughs> However, I'm actually on the opposite side of the river this time. In my recent walks, they've all been on that side of the river in the Forest of Dean district. So at the moment, I'm actually standing on the Bristol side of the River Severn. I will be going back over there soon. So without having to go all the way up to Gloucester again, how am I going to get across the Severn to that side again? Well, that might be a clue. That's the Severn Bridge. Severn Bridge opened by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, accompanied by His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh on the 8th of September 1966. Well, the Severn Bridge is my very favourite bridge, and I'll explain why later. Now, the bridge carries the M48 motorway from England into Wales. Now, although the River Severn all falls within England at this point, when you get to the other side of the crossing you cross the River Wye because the River Wye actually flows into the Severn just over there, you probably can't see it from here. So once you cross the River Wye you're then in Wales. But the whole of the Severn Bridge crossing is actually made up of four little bridges. So this first bit here up to the big fat support there that's the Aust Viaduct. Beyond that the main bit that goes over where those two towers are that's the Severn Bridge. Beyond that, you've got a bit that crosses over land the other side. That's the Beechley Viaduct. And then beyond there, you've got the Y Bridge. You can't see that at the moment, but we will hopefully see it later. OK, well, I need to get over that side. So I'm now going to cross the Severn Bridge. Chepstow 
I'm going to cross back into England to go to somewhere else now. Old Ferry and Business Centre. Ah. Well, that building there used to be the Old Ferry Inn. I can remember when it used to be a pub when I lived in the area. Uh, anyway, I'm back in England again. So it was just a very brief hop into Wales and out again. So, uh, well, I've come to Beechley now. And we'll have a look at Beechley a bit more closely now. Okay, well I won't walk any further down this slipway, otherwise I shall end up just walking into the river. <laughs> Not really what I want to be doing today. But more importantly, I am now practically underneath the Severn Bridge. There it is, in all its wondrous glory. Well, years ago, there used to be a ferry. So, in the days before the Severn Bridge existed, there used to be a ferry that came from here, from Beechley, across the other side to Warst. So it was a ferry called the Seven Princess. And basically, that was the only way that cars could get across the Seven at the time. So cars used to queue down this slipway here and then basically get onto the Seven Princess. Uh, and then the ferry would go over the other side to Warst. But then in 1966, when the Seven Bridge was opened, that was the day the ferry actually stopped functioning. So, but yeah. Interesting times, really. Obviously, I don't remember the ferry because that was the year I was born. But uh, I was born in May 1966. So four months later, the Seven Bridge was open. So that's another reason why the Seven Bridge is my favourite bridge because it was open the year I was born. So fantastic. But there are other reasons too, so I'll go into that. Okay, well I'm walking under the Seven Bridge now. <laughs> Fantastic. I'll walk just a bit further along here and I'll talk some more about the bridge. In the early 1960s, during the Seven Bridge's construction, my mum worked for one of the companies that were involved in the building of the bridge. It was a company called Cleveland's Bridge or Cleveland's Bridges. And it was actually part of a consortium called the Association of Bridge Builders. Um, so that consortium, that was all involved in the bridge's construction. Uh, so my mum was about 17 or 18. She worked with the people that actually built the Y Bridge section. So you can always remember her telling me, because um, it's fascinating when you think how this bridge was built. What happened was the road on the deck sections was obviously built piece by piece and each piece of the deck when it was built it was floated from a shipyard in Chepstow down the River Wye and then into the River Severn here and then it was hauled up by a crane into place so slowly but surely pieces of the deck were actually put across the bridge but uh, so my mum was working for Cleveland Bridges before all the deck sections were in place I can always remember Mum telling me that on one of her days off while she was working for Cleveland Bridges, she was actually given a tour of the Seven Bridge whilst it was still being built. Now at that time, you have to just imagine that only one of the deck sections were in place at the time, or maybe one or two, but not all of those deck sections would have been in place at that time. So the tour that she was taken on involved her walking up those catwalks. So that thick cable that holds the suspension cables in place, she walked up there, over the tower, and down the other side. I don't know how far she would have gone, but basically, she walked up those catwalks. <laughs> I mean, flipping heck, I could never have done that, even when I was her age. I mean, to say she would have been 17 or 18 at the time, but I would never have done that at that age. 
she couldn't do it now she says but at that time there would have been some kind of safety fencing around the catwalk so um so there's some sort of grid or protective fencing whatever so you know she wouldn't have been at risk of falling but it's just a fact that she walked up those catwalks with a colleague and none of those decks were in place at the time so she would have been looking right down to the river wow what a scary thought <laughs> but i'm very proud of my mum for that and also with that in mind that was before obviously the bridge was opened uh queen elizabeth ii opened the bridge in 1966 also Barbara Castle who was the transport minister at the time she would have stepped onto the bridge but before then my mum walked onto the bridge albeit on the catwalks so officially my mother is the first woman to have stepped onto the Severn Bridge and I'm very proud of that So now I'm at Beachley Point. Won't be able to walk much further in a minute. I'll see how far I can go. So just over there, just get a firm foothold. That's Chapel Rock. The remains of a chapel on the rock. Can't reach it because the tide's too high, but you can reach it at low tide. However, I wouldn't recommend it. If you're going to try and get there, go by boat. Further down the Severn is another bridge. So uh, that's the second Severn crossing, which was opened 30 years after the original Severn bridge. But the second Severn crossing is now known as the Prince of Wales Bridge. But uh, I'll talk about that on another walk soon. But yeah, when I was growing up in Chepstow, uh, my grandparents often used to come here to Beachley Point, and we'd have a little little bit of a walk around. You know, you don't have to walk far. Uh, but I always remember because when I started getting hay fever, I was about seven when I started getting hay fever, Granny used to say to me, oh, we'll go and have a, a little wander over to Beachley Point, she said, because you'll get some sea air there and that'll, that'll help with your hay fever, she said. <laughs> I don't know whether it actually did or not, to be honest with you, but it was always a nice trip out. You know, we used to do it sometimes on a Sunday afternoon and it wasn't far to come. So yeah, I always enjoyed coming to Beachley Point. Happy memories coming here today. And there is the River Wye. Just see it. But you can just see the mouth of it as it flows into the Severn. Wonderful. And here is the Wye Bridge. So the Wye Bridge is the first or last bit of the Severn crossing overall. So if you're driving from Wales to England, that's the first bridge you'll drive over. Then you'll drive over the Beachley Viaduct, then the Severn Bridge, and then the Aust Viaduct. But yeah, when my mum worked for Cleveland Bridges, the people she worked with were the people that built the Y Bridge. I turned round, headed back around Beachley Point, and made my way towards the slipway below the Severn Bridge. Tide's rising now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, earlier I said that the Severn Bridge is my very favourite bridge. Well, various reasons really. I think maybe linked to my mum having worked on the bridge and, and obviously being the first woman to step onto the bridge. Uh, but also when I lived in Chepstow, I could see this bridge every single day. 
You know, I had a view of the bridge from my bedroom window. I used to cross this bridge very, very regularly. Uh, and even when I left Chepstow, I was living in the Bristol and Somerset area. Still crossed the bridge a lot because I used to come back and see my granny in Chepstow. And then go on and do walks in the Y Valley and Forrester Dean. So yeah, it's just a beautiful bridge. It really is. You know, it's nearly 60 years old now. Uh, it's nearly 60 years since it was opened and that gives you an idea of how old I am too, so... <laughs> but yeah, it's a fantastic bridge and it's an amazing piece of, piece of engineering really. Okay, let's go on then. I walked along Beachley Road for just over one and a half miles, as far as a footpath signed for a very familiar long-distance trail. So I just thought it would be nice to walk a little bit of Offers Dyke Path as it was nearby. But this is actually a very important stretch too. Now, when I lived in Chepstow, when I first discovered Office Dyke Path, this was another section I used to walk quite regularly. Uh, so uh, I haven't been here since 1990 when I did Office Dyke, when I did the whole length of it. So, uh, but here you can actually see remains of the dyke. Again, the path is actually going along the top of some of the dyke remains. Now, it's only a short stretch of office dyke path I'm doing. Oh, but yeah, just up this hill, and that'll be it. And all will become clearer as to why I've particularly done this bit today. So here we are. This stone marks the very start and finish of Offers Dyke Path. Okay, so yeah, when I did Offers Dyke Path in 1990, this is where I started from too because I walked south to north. So I started here on Sedbury Cliffs and ended up at Prestatton in North Wales. Yeah, and I always said before that walking the whole end of Offers Dyke Path was the best walk I ever did. Yeah. I wanted to do it now though, I think I'd have to do some serious training, but uh, yeah, I could probably do it again. <laughs> but yeah, it's wonderful memory seeing this stone. And as I say, when I lived in Chepstow, I regularly used to walk this section of Offers Dyke anyway, but it was just nice in 1990 to finally do the whole thing and start from here. So yeah, okay, and then over there, here we are, close to the Seven Bridge again. Really good. Yeah, happy memories. Very happy memories. Happy memories of when I lived in Chepstow as a kid and came and walked off as Dyke Path along this stretch quite regularly. But probably more so when I was a bit older 
and when I eventually did the whole length of Office Dyke Path in 1990, when I was 24. And uh, I started it from here, did the whole route from south to north. And when I was here, I remember meeting a couple of other people that were also doing Office Dyke Path, and we took each other's photos. We took each other's photos basically to prove that we were at the very start of Office Dyke Path. And my photo that they took of me was something like this. If you can get on, I'm not as young as I used to be. <laughs> I'm sure it was something like this. <laughs> hey. Oh well, anyway, that's my day finished now. Just a short walk today. So I really wanted to have a look around the Severn Bridge and Beachley Point. But whilst I was nearby, I thought it'd be quite nice to just come and revisit this section of Office Dyke Path too, because obviously being the very start of it, it's a pretty important stretch. OK, well, I'm going to retrace my steps back to the road because that's what you've got to do with this part of Office Dyke. You can't actually reach the start from anywhere else. You have to walk it from the road and then come to here where it starts and finishes and just retrace your steps. That's no problem. I haven't got far to walk. And then I'm going to check into my guest house a bit later on. 